Australia. It's the closest thing we have to a neighbour here in New Zealand, despite being over a thousand miles away. However, the economic differences between our two countries are remarkable, and as we open our borders after two years of being shut, it is said that thousands of Kiwis are packing their bags for greener pastures in Australia, or rather, redder pastures. According to the statistics departments of both the New Zealand and Australian governments, the difference in wages between the two countries is said to be around $500 a week for the average full-time worker, which is incredibly high. In addition to this, the common narrative in New Zealand is that the cost of living is much lower in Australia too. Now this makes sense both from an economies of scale point of view, where there's naturally more competition, and the fact that their value-added tax, or GST, is much lower at 10%. In this video I'll be putting that to the test by comparing the cost of living in both New Zealand and Australia across a range of household goods and expenses to see if the truth lives up to the tale. So let's assess the broad areas of comparison. We'll start by taking a look at groceries, as for many families this is one of their largest expenses. Fortunately, Countdown and Woolworths are effectively the same company selling the same goods, so comparing them should be pretty easy. We'll then branch out into fast food by taking a look at both McDonald's and Subway. After that we'll take a look at public transport, such as the train and private transport such as the price of cars and petrol. We'll then take a look at housing costs both to rent and to buy and then onto general utilities such as power, water, broadband and phone. And we'll wrap up by looking at large household goods such as TVs and couches. So let's start with groceries by looking at Woolworths in Australia and Countdown in New Zealand. I've compared 9 standard everyday grocery items all of which are identical across the two countries, making the comparison simple. The first item compared is a kilogram of chicken, and as you can see the price is pretty much the same with Australia, coming in slightly cheaper than New Zealand. If we look at the second item, a kilo of beef mince, the difference is a bit larger, with Australia coming in at around 50 cents cheaper per kilo. So it's clear that meat is generally cheaper in Australia. The third item is long grain rice, and despite coming in the exact same packaging, it is sold over one dollar cheaper in Australia. This is continued when we look at a kilo of of frozen peas, coming in about 60 cents cheaper in Aussie, and a litre of olive oil, again in the same packaging, but is $1.70 cheaper. But to make matters worse, the next item is a kilo of tasty cheese, which is a whopping $7.50 cheaper in Australia. This in particular is hard to understand given we're always told our products are expensive due to world pricing and New Zealand being a price taker. But that's about where Australia's advantage ends, as New Zealand is better in some areas. Our butter is cheaper, with a 500 gram block coming in at $1.20 cheaper. Our beer is much cheaper, with a 6 pack of Coronas coming in at over $10 cheaper. And for some odd reason, a standard block of Cadbury's chocolate comes in at around 60 cents cheaper here. Probably because here they have to compete with better chocolate. Whitakers. <laughs> So all in all, Australia looks to have us beat in the grocery market for everyday essentials. However, we do need to consider that Australia generally waives the GST on these items, so the comparison is skewed because of this. The next item to compare are fast foods, both McDonald's and Subway. First up is the Big Mac, a classic that can be found in nearly every country across the world except for Russia. In New Zealand, we are paying a premium of 40 cents over what our Australian neighbours are paying. And if we compare a foot-long chicken teriyaki sandwich at Subway, surprisingly New Zealand comes out ahead by 50 cents. So there's no real winner in the fast food arena. Next up is transport, so let's start by looking at the price of petrol which has been soaring in recent months. The escalation in price has been so harsh the New Zealand government has even stepped in to reduce the excise tax and bring down the cost for consumers. Yet again, despite the recent moves to reduce the pricing, Australia comes out much cheaper than New Zealand by roughly 90 cents a litre. Comparing petrol prices can be difficult as it is location dependent, so I've taken the pricing from the BP closest to the main landmark, both in Sydney and Auckland. New cars also appear to be significantly cheaper in Australia, with the base model Mazda CX-5 coming in at over $2,000 cheaper over the ditch. So it's clear that private transport in Australia is substantially cheaper than in New Zealand. Looking at public transport however, for a similar 10 km trip it would usually cost the same in both Sydney and Auckland. However Auckland is currently running a 50% off promotion until September, so for the time being Auckland is cheaper. Now let's look at housing costs. As expected, the cost of the median home in Sydney is around $400,000 more than in Auckland. However, this only tells us half the story, as Australian banks are currently charging over 1% less in Australia than New Zealand for a one-year fixed rate mortgage. When factoring in the median house value, the repayments on a 30-year loan would cost $400 a week more in Sydney than in Auckland. So clearly buying in Auckland is cheaper. If we look at renting, a similar aged and sized apartment would cost around $300 a week more in the Sydney CBD than in Auckland. Flatting is also cheaper, with flats in two similarly situated areas being around $70 a week cheaper in Auckland. So New Zealand comes in substantially cheaper than Australia for the cost of housing. But let's take a look at utilities. For power, 
Both countries have PowerShop offering electricity, so we can use this for our comparison. Assuming a usage of 10 kilowatts a day, and we use half our energy off peak, Australia comes in at roughly $1 a day cheaper than in New Zealand. Even if we used low user pricing in New Zealand, we'd be 40 cents worse off, and the marginal usage cost would be over 50% higher. Cell phone plans are also much cheaper, with their standard plans having a huge amount of data compared to those in New Zealand, for roughly 80 to 100 gigabytes a month of data and unlimited calls and texts. Aussie comes in over $55 a month cheaper, at less than half of the cost. In most of New Zealand, the water is included in the rates bill. In Auckland and Sydney, water is charged, and Auckland comes out much cheaper by about 90 cents per thousand litres. But the most surprising difference is the cost of broadband, though this isn't a surprise to Australians that have suffered with NBN. A 300 megabyte download speed fibre connection in New Zealand comes in around $100 a month cheaper than the equivalent in Australia. So all in all, utilities are likely similarly priced between Australia and New Zealand. So the final area for us to compare is large household goods such as electronics and furniture. Luckily both Harvey Norman and Freedom Furniture operate in both countries with similar stock, so we can compare these. If we look at one of Freedom's larger couches, Australia comes in at $200 cheaper. The same can be said for televisions, with a 75 inch Samsung TV cheaper by $300 over the ditch. And if we look at a Fisher & Paykel dryer, it is around $250 cheaper in Australia. So much for being a Kiwi brand right? And here we're getting told it's a birthday deal. New Zealand has the cheaper iPhones however, with the 13 Pro coming in $80 lower. So Australia looks to generally have the cheapest large household goods. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison video and got a sense for how prices differ across a range of categories between Australia and New Zealand. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos just like this in the personal finance and investing space. Drop a comment down below if you know of any other products that are priced significantly different between two countries. For me, in Singapore the average price to have a haircut at the mall was three times cheaper than in New Zealand. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.